Hello and welcome back to Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. So last episode we built four guard towers and set about trying to recruit some more dudes to our colony. The plan was to shift our existing low level colonists to guard positions where they're expendable and will probably die, rip, and replace their very important jobs like courier and builder with high level recruits from our level two tavern. Oh, hello, good morning, how are you doing? But we can't go above level two until we get a builder's hut to level three. For this episode, we're gonna be adding a little bit of spice to our colony. And what do I mean by that? I mean, we're gonna be building a restaurante. Il restaurante. So let's jump in. Mamma mia. Man, you know what? I've kind of realized my character looks a little bit like Mario, doesn't he? With that beard. Does Mario have blue eyes? I don't know. Hang on a sec. What's what's going on here? Have you has he been has he been sticking out of his cage and making babies with my female colonists? That's not very cool. Straw fingers says, "Does it look like it's related to me?" Okay, that's a good question. Uh, he's very purple, and <laughs> chuckles is very not purple, but maybe he adopted it. I don't know. Either way, I think he is safely secure inside that jail cell. There's no getting out of there. Strawfinger says we'll see about that. Goddamn right we will. Okay, right, so let's do it. The reason why we haven't recruited any more guards is because we wanted to wait until our guard towers were all level two, and now they are. Fantastic. So we can finally sacrifice slash fire our builders and replace them. So off to the builders' huts. Oh man, build the builder the builder twins, the ugly twins. We're gonna fire Bilbo. Oh man, he's leveled up really well as a builder, but uh, and he survived the curse of the builders. He didn't get killed by like a zombie. But it is time for him to rise a knight. He has ascended from builder, mere builder, to uh, to knight supreme. This is Legolas's hole. Which guard tower doesn't have a guard yet? I think this one doesn't. Now also, as you can see, I've built a few stairways, a few paths and things. Basically made all of these guard towers look like they fit in a bit more and look a bit neater. And for this series, the look of the colony is one of the most important aspects. Manage workers, Bilbo the Ugly, we're gonna hire you as a knight. Rise a knight. Now these are level two guard towers. What does that mean? I'm not entirely, oh man, he looks so cool. Right away. I need a sword to continue working. Yeah, I bet you do. Oh my God, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Cactus Jack, you fiend. He's been in the colony for like two seconds and already he's had a baby. I mean, I guess that means we don't have to hire another colonist. But it also means, oh no, he's had a baby, which means that housing slot is taken up. But we can't recruit a baby to be a builder. Anyway, let's see what level tools we can give to our guards on a guard tower level two. Much in the same way you can click on the builder's hut and press this red circle. If you press it on the guard tower, it should tell us what level can wear what armor. So this is level two, he can use iron swords. And I assume iron armor. Well, let's find out. We're also going to recruit the last guard. That's the builder. So we go down into the cave. We say, manage workers, Hermione, you're fired. There we go. Now we go to the last remaining guard tower. It's not this one. It's not that one. It's not that one. They've all got guards. It must be this one up here on the mountain ledge. And again, yeah, as you can see, oh, I didn't quite finish this. Perfect. Very nice. And now that's all plumbed in and parved up. So manage workers and as a knight, rise a knight, the ugly knights, the, the, the devilish twins, the ugly twins. 
And now we have a new bed slot for a citizen. But before we get that bed slot filled in, let's go over and disable babies. Because the last thing we want is for our colonists to start making more babies to fill up those citizen slots. So that means we have one slot to recruit. Oh, there he is. Oh, there she is, rather. Alyssa Jack, daughter of Cactus Jack, the fiend. Anyway, um, let's check her stats. Oh, wow. She has really good stats. Great athletics, good adaptability, good knowledge and intelligence. Yeah, she'll make a fine worker when she gets old enough. So who are we going to hire? We've got Rose Swaggins, this dark and mysterious beauty. However, we cannot recruit her. We don't have any sunflowers. Whoa. I mean, what? That was... Well, sure. I won't argue with that. So we've got one colonist, Alyssa. She grew up so quick. That's amazing. We've also got Barbie Lightyear. She wants hay bales and her stats are poor. Those are mid to poor stats. Whoops. What else we got going on here? We've got a traveling trader. He does have some interesting stuff though. Purple dye. Well, no, we don't need purple dye because we've got blue and red dye. Magic beans. That could be cool. I wonder if they make like a beanstalk that goes up to the sky. Probably not. That would be too cool. Bilbo Hamilton. What can I do? Nine diamonds. I don't care what your stats are for. Not wait. Oh, maybe actually, these stats are freaking amazing. Look. Oh, imagine him as a builder. Twenty-five adaptability. I'm thinking this could be a good builder. Let's see how many diamonds we got left. Twelve diamonds. So that's going to swallow up a lot of our diamonds. But what else are we going to use diamonds for? You know. Yes, sir. But wait, no. Hold, hold, hold the trigger. We could find somebody else that's even better. Let's check out Chuckles here. What's it today, Eight man? diamonds. And his stats, not quite as good. His intelligence is quite high, though, so he'll level up quite quickly. But I don't trust that name. Rose Swaggins, we've already checked. Who's in the tavern? Donald Holmes. What can I do for Ooh, you? Super cheap with redstone. Not amazing stats. Oh, Mr. The Ugly. <laughs> oh, that name is just so clumsy. I love it. What's it today, Dan? 45 books. Oh, look at these stats. This guy's a beast. Wait, was he? Oh, no. Oh, no. He despawned while we were looking at him. Oh, that's, that's, that's insane. Oh, Mr. The Ugly. That's such a shame. Builder is a really important job, and we want to make sure that the builders that we choose are going to be freaking amazing. So let's double check the stats required for builders. They need adaptability and athletics. So we're going to hire Alyssa because she does have okay 10 and 13, but our second builder. Yes. Bilbo, athletics is low. Adaptability is very high. And, oh, you know, oh, it's going to be Bilbo Hamilton. How's the work going? Your citizens urge you to build a warehouse. This will lighten your backpack and they might get their materials faster. Don't worry, dude. We're way ahead of you. We've already got a warehouse. But what we need to do now is build a ristorante. A restaurant isn't super hard to build. In fact, if we look here, it, well, it's a forester's hut. Where's the restaurant? There it is. An apple, wood, and a build tool. No worries. We could even build two restaurants, but why would you ever do that? Now, while we're building the restaurant, I'm also going to assign our second builder to upgrade the windmill here. And uh, let's see. Decoration request created for Colony New Kingdom. So this is a little bit different. With buildings, you assign who you want it to build on the actual block itself. But with the windmill, what we have to do is go to here create a request. How do we assign our builder to build something? Here she is, old Alyssa. What? You think I'm not strong enough? Watch me. Wow, wow, wow. Family. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So it looks like Cactus Jack done the dirty with Hermione the Ugly. 
And luckily enough, Alyssa inherited her father's second name and not her mother's. Ooh, mushrooms. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. So on the Builder's Hut, under Work Orders, we have Schematics, Decoration. I think that's going to say Caledonian Windmill. 68 blocks, and we can assign this to this Builder's Hut, right? Assign. And Alyssa should get to work. She's going to come over here. And there we go, Windmill Level 2. Go for it, sister, I believe. Now there's a lot of items she's going to need because it's a very complex build. Oh my, oh my god, what? Flowers? Specific flowers? Oh, Lily of the Valley? Oxide daisies? This ain't cool. Well, we'll come back to this because obviously the windmill is a very important build, but it looks like it's going to happen over time. Now we need to find a place to put our restaurant. Now, do we want to put it up here? I think near to the town hall seems pretty cool. Yeah, I think up here is going to be quite perfect, actually. So with the build tool, right click, cook, medieval oak, and let's see. Oh, my God, this is a big old building, isn't it? Spin it around. Where's the front? Oh, my God, this thing's huge. And this is only level one. Well, obviously, let's see what a level five looks like. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. This thing's massive, beautiful and amazing. Is there a medieval oak alternative, though? Oh, there is! And this thing is also pretty frickin' beautiful. Oh, decisions, decisions. What do we go for here? I think it might have to be the alternative. Yeah, and this is about perfect. So what does level one look like? And also, what are the materials for level one? Oh, hang on a sec. This could be trouble. Thatch? I didn't sign up for thatch. But other than thatch, actually, this looks really, really, really simple. Yeah, I think we're going to go alternative because it just looks a lot neater, doesn't it? Now, how does this work with the corners here? Yeah, that's okay. We can build up some cobblestone underneath here to make it look like it's all plumbed in and correct. Well, okay, let's pull the trigger and press go. So, builder's hut, manage workers. Yeah, look at that. 25 adaptability. This guy's a beast. You're hired, Bilbo. Why is Mirabelle having trouble? Oh, no! Oh, of course, she's got influenza. Man, that plagued us in all the Mod 6, so... That's something we're going to have to deal with pretty soon. But a restaurant is more important than a hospital. I think, at least, anyway. So, let's find the cook thing. Build options. Bilbo Hamilton. And yeah, thatched oak shingles. Everything else looks pretty simple to do. Hay bales, oak slabs, oak timber frames. All of this stuff we kind of have. But not the thatched oak shingle. So we'll build building. Builder is going to get on it. And he starts by digging. So we've got a long time until he actually is going to start placing bricks. So let's get going. Also, actually, that reminds me. Maybe we should build some more iron tools for our builders. Because they must be running out soon. Here we go, thatched oak shingle. You just use wheat, oak planks, and sticks. That's actually really easy for us. We're gonna have to convert some of these hay bales to wheat, but that's just, you know, the price we pay. That's the recipe for the shingles. And is that all we need? I think that's all we need. And there we go, the thatched oak shingles and slabs are in the warehouse. I've got everything else we need crafted and ready to give to the builder. Let's go and get this restaurant built. Bilbo Hamilton. What up, chief? So your required resources, guess what? I've got them all. Take them. Oh, all except the oak log. Or did I give those to him? He's got 79% supplied. Thatched oak and the shingles are where are what he's waiting for. And those are in the warehouse. Ah, Bilbo wants a shovel, of course. There's also a delivery of iron. Oh, right, yeah, iron swords and armor for our um, our guards. There's droppers, spruce... Oh, man, Alyssa Jack has a lot of requests going on. 
So if we hook up Bilbo with a shovel, he should get to work, and an iron one is exactly what he needs. There's some in the warehouse, but uh, it's easier just to give it to him in his pack and uh, let him get to work. What we can start working on, though, is Alyssa Jack's request list. So as your blue it, blue orchid, lily of the valley, these are all things that I, I never even pick up. I never even imagine that I need. Well, while it's raining, let's go and gather some flowers. Poppies are always useful. Mostly for red dye, but otherwise, maybe for some builds. Oh, sorry, dude. Didn't mean to punch you. Aha, now these look like they could be azure bluettes. No, they're alliums. Man, so I recently went to the Chelsea Flower Show and I actually saw some alliums in real life. And you know what? They are really good looking plants. If I saw one on Tinder, I would definitely swipe right. Is that the right way? I don't know. Is, is it to swipe left or right? Aha, uh -huh. hello, blue flowers. What are you? Cornflower. Also got dandelions. They could come in handy. Either way, they're yellow dye, which is great. Oh, and thank the light. The night has passed and... Oh, look at that beautiful rainbow. Can you say... Thumbnail? I think I can. Boom, spot the thumbnail. So, if you're watching and you made it this far, make sure you type in rainbow into the comment section below and I will heart your comments. Purple sage, that could come in handy. Oxide daisies, yes! That's something that we need for the... Um, for the build. Oh, sorry, raccoon bro. Do you want, are you trying to fight me? Are you trying to fight me? Here, take a take a piece of bread. You damn fool. What's he doing? It's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, now look look at this pink forest. Is this not beautiful? I had no idea, but the foliage kind of gathers on the floor and creates this really beautiful looking effect. Oh, I'm hooked. I'm hooked. Oh, mushroom. Whoa. Oh my god. What the hell am I looking at? This is like some Mad Max level of craziness. Look at this. This is all like a, like a man-made kind of tower structure thing. Oh, these biomes are freaking incredible. Let's go scope this mother trucker out. Oh man, red glaze, terracotta, terracotta, granite. Maybe we should grab some of this stuff. It could come in useful. Let's take a scope. Oh yeah, look at this. There's loads and loads of flowers in here. Blue orchids. Exactly what I need. Oh my God, it's like... Oh, uh-oh. Oh my God, oh no, 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 no. These guys are the real deal. No! Oh! oh no! I'm so far away as well. Oh man, but look at this thing. That's a really impressive looking structure. But all my stuff. Oh, I gotta get that back. Gotta get that back. Oh, there's Bilbo on patrol. Got his iron sword now. Ready to rock. Oh, it's going downstairs. I think they just run a, run a route of like all of the buildings in your colony, which is kind of useful. And that's why it's kind of cool that we have like a cave building because it means they never wander too far. Right, now where did I break into this thing? This looks like the spot. Okay, now where did I die? Up here, got my stuff. Transfer items, no additional items. Transfer items, boom, okay. I don't see any monsters yet. I think, oh, time to go. Whew. One thing though, this does give me a great opportunity to level up my boots because check out their level now, 28,000. Just over halfway towards the goal of 50K. 
Okay, so fast forward back to the colony and I've set up my eye in the sky camera to record our builder going to work on this restaurant building. Now this is a very weird and quirky build because it uses like thatch, it uses like straw rooftops instead of just the regular old oak stairs that most of the other level one buildings use. But the restaurant is a very important build for our colony. Obviously our dudes need somewhere to eat and as soon as we can get a worker inside here, cooking up some hamburgers and some hot dogs, our colonists will be well fed and happy. Now I thought it was very important that we have the restaurant kind of close to the core of the colony because, like I said, people are going to have to come here for their food. Now look at this, what's our builder doing on the roof again? He's, he's just so out of control, this guy is crazy. Man, what a, what a nuts colonist we have in Bilbo Hamilton. Anyway, yeah, we have the restaurant complete now with that thatched roof. It's a cool look, it's a unique look. I like the yellow, uh, but I am keen to see how it looks as we level it up. And a quick look in the interior shows us that this isn't really like a five-star restaurant. This isn't like a Michelin-star restaurant just yet. But it's comfy and cozy, everything you'd want, need, or ask for from a level one build. Well, all right, all right, feeding the masses advancement made. Let's take a look inside this bad mother trucker. So this is the restaurant. Colonists come here when they need food, and we have a chef here who will A, cook it for them, and B, distribute the food to them. So if we click on the restaurant block, we can manage workers and hire a worker. You can get a cook or an assistant cook. I think assistant cooks become relevant when the building gets to a higher level, but at levels one and two, it's not important. Also, check this out. So basically every single recipe that the mods we have are added kind of automatically to the recipe list for our prospective chef. And what this means is whatever we grow on the farm, the chef will know how to make some kind of food out of it. Now the chef here needs some fuel to cook whatever he's cooking, and that usually comes in the form of like wood, but basically anything that has a burn time can be added to this list and used as an acceptable sort of fuel. Unfortunately though, what we want to make sure is that coal is off, and we also want to make sure that oak wood is on. So basically we're going to use oak planks as fuel, pretty much just oak planks. And so we'll have to make sure that our warehouse is fully stocked with oak planks, but it's much better than going through our coal stockpile, which is much more valuable to us than it is the colonists. So we do have one problem now. We have four places for our colonists to live at the tavern, and we have four colonists, two couriers and two builders. So for the time being, what we can do is fire one of our couriers. So I'm going to go down here into the cave section and fire whichever courier is down here. I think it's Cactus Jack. Oh no, it's Mirabelle Kenobi, but you know what, that's fine. So we're going to fire her and instead we're going to get Mirabelle to be our chef. Ho ho ho, manage workers, Mirabelle Kenobi, hire. So adaptability is a pretty good stat and it's important for a chef and luckily Mirabelle has that. Also, Knowledge 6, it's not her best stats, but it's, you know what, it's totally fine for the time being. Mirabel Kenobi, the cook. Why don't you fry us up some Womp Rats? Oh, so also, she's going to have a different voice. Let's hear what she sounds like. Isn't there something I could do? Yes, my lord. I mean... Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, of course, yes, sir. I feel like uh, that's duped from another kind of colonist. I, I, I swear I've heard that voice before. But anyway, there is Mirabelle, our cook, hard at work, slaving over that oven. Boom! So what's the next step? Well, we've got more jobs than we have colonists, and we don't have enough places for them to sleep. It's time to think about a house. That's right, we've just done the, the restaurant, but the second building we're going to be going for this episode is the home, the house. So let's take a look. We're looking for the house. Boom. Pretty simple to make. Torch, planks, and build tool. Now we're going to make uh, a few of these. I think we're going to want three to get going, and we'll upgrade these to level two very quickly. But honestly, you know what? The hard part is going to be finding the right place to put this down. 
Now, a house is where colonists live. That sounds kind of obvious. But it's important to remember that a colonist is going to have to run back to their house when they're done for the day. So you don't really want your houses to be too far away from the rest of the colony. Now, part of me thinks we've got this nice big open area here. Why not put a couple of houses down on this spot? Well, let's see what they look like to start with. Now, there's not much room here, is there? So this is what the medieval oak house looks like. Let's find the front door. I think, is that the front door? That's the front door. And, uh, ooh. oh, it's rainy. So the side is very flat here. But all in all, that's a very simple, primitive build that we shouldn't have too many problems with. So is there an alternative? Yes, looks like there is. And that's pretty cool, though. So the Medieval Oak Alternative House comes with a stable on the side. I kind of like that because we can need a place to put our horses once we get some. So I'm thinking maybe one alternative and one regular. Also, the interior looks pretty swish. So that's level one. What does level five look like? Oh my god, now that's a that's a big old building. And you know what? I'm kind of sad because that doesn't look like an oak building at all. There's a lot of... Is this a sandstone or brick? As well as stone brick. You know what? I, I really don't like that. But what's the non-alternative level five? Whoa, look at this. This is much more impressive. I like this much, much more. Oh, it is freaking huge though. This is way bigger. I did not sign on for this. So here we go, it's decision time. Basically, we can go for Medieval Oak Normal, which is much bigger, but it looks much nicer as well and, and has better materials. Or we can go for Medieval Oak Alternative, which is much, much smaller, but at higher levels, looks much, much uglier as well. I really don't know. Also, at higher levels, you remove the stables, which means we can't even keep our horse there. Hmm. Well, I think, you know what, we're gonna go for Medieval Oak. Think there we go. Assign a builder, and we're going to assign. Oh, who are we going to assign to this? Alyssa is. Alyssa is doing our windmills. So it's going to have to be old Bilbo. Now the materials very very simple. We're going to we're going to need some more white beds. That's for sure. But everything else, we definitely have some of. Oh man, I really love the fact that we went with medieval oak. It's a very simple build style that we always have the materials for. It's great. So build the building, Bilbo. So that's the outside house taken care of. Now I'm also going to take a look at what the cave house looks like. Down here in our cave section, I'm going to put down, potentially... Ooh, it's a bit thundery outside, isn't it? So this is what the cave house looks like. Oh my god! What the hell? Ugo Pennypincher died from in fire! Word spreads around that your tavern is a dangerous place! You are likely to see fewer visitors in the future. What the hell? What the hell happened? How? What? Where? Fire? Did, oh my god. I think our colonists got struck by lightning. Well, we're going to have to do something about that. Oh my god. That's crazy. Our colonists got struck by lightning. And now we're going to see less people arrive in our tavern. That major league sucks. Well, whatever. Can't be helped. Let's go and sort out this house. So, level one, tick, assign a builder, it's going to be old Bilbo, aha, and the cave building requires red beds, okay, cool, good to know. But again, much like with the builder's hut and the courier's hut, the cave style buildings are much less intensive on resources. So let's just swish it around and build the exact same on the opposite side. So there we go. A quick look at the scroll tells us that Bilbo... Where is Bilbo's requirements? Oh no, maybe they're all having a day off because somebody died. Could that be it? Alyssa, Bilbo, what's going on? Oh, I didn't know these two were together. Cactus Jack and Bilbo, wait a minute, does Hermione the Ugly know? And the second build for this episode, let's squeeze out a speed build 
of the above ground house. Remember, we're keeping two cave buildings beneath ground, but this is going to be where the nice houses are. And I want a nice array of nice houses above ground to show off for the colony. It's a very quick build and the materials used are incredibly simple. It's cute, it's cozy, it's basic. It's exactly what you need, want and expect from a level one building. So there we go, home sweet home, and this is a pretty sweet looking pad. So if you want to upgrade this to level two, let's take a look at what the build options require from us. So yeah, polished andesite, some oak paper timber frames, barrels, trap doors, polished andesite, but honestly, this is a very simple upgrade to level two. What about the restaurant next door? Hey, what's up, Mirabelle? Hope you're cooking everything amazingly for our colony. So let's take a look. Inventory. Oh, look, so it's automatically put all of the food that we had in the warehouse over here into the inventory of the restaurant. Or maybe just the restaurant comes with some free, uh, free food. Either way, we can also help out by putting some food from the warehouse in here as well. So build options and upgrading, here we go. So it needs way more thatched oak shingles to get the next upgrade stage. Coarse dirt, polished andesite, like a few things, but basically the same things that the civilian one needs, the same thing that the basic house needs. And that's really good to know. But thank you for watching this episode of Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. My name is Shin, and once again, a huge thank you to all of you guys that are subscribed to my Patreon and are YouTube members. I'll give you a quick wave. There we go. <laughs> oh, I love that. It's so cool. I need to do that more often. Anyway, this episode we filled the last two desires of our colonists. They wanted food, so we built them a restaurant, which is the thatch building behind us. And then they wanted a place to live as well, so we built a house here. You can see even further behind that one. And also two houses down in the cave section beneath our colony. I'm going to add a few more paths around the colony and upgrade the restaurant and all of our houses up to level two before next episode. And then we can think about what the next step is. It might be about resource production, but it might also be about getting the builders up to level three. Also, we need to get a library so we can do some research. Man, there's so much to consider. But until next time, thank you for watching and take care.